Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Golf Cart Garage. I am Tim, in case you didn't know that. We come here every week, every Tuesday, Tim Taco Tuesday, ever how you want to remember it. We talk about golf carts and the weather, and ma mainly golf carts. I, I get off track sometimes. I mean, I, I agree. Sometimes I go in other directions. Let me check Facebook over here. Kevin, what's up? Kevin in, on Facebook. William Moore, North Carolina. Kevin in Indiana. My wife just got back the other day from Indiana. Said it was nice. Uh, helpless, what's going on? Helpless. Kirk, still worth the wait for Tuesdays, but I hope to get back to twice a week. We may eventually, Kirk. Right now, the, you know, the paid service is getting in the way. They want me to be available for some paid calls. Uh, but uh, it's, it's very possible we may get back to twice a week. I'm not really sure. We, we got to give it a little more time. The, you know, the busy season for golf is actually just starting, you know, you know about mid-March, you know, is when it starts picking up. Gene, what's going on, Gene? David Irwin, Keith. Hey, Tim from Palmetto, Florida, what's going on? 80 degrees. Big Mike, what's up, Tim? And fellow gearheads, 60. Is your, your problem, your issue, Big Mike, is it getting taken care of? Is everything cool? Uh, Craig. What's going on, Craig? What's shaking? Howdy, fellas. Gary England. William Rizzo, what's going on, William? Jeffrey, what's going on, Jeffrey? Hey, Tim, 53 in the Poconos. 77, Florida Keys. From William Rizzo. Let's see where I'm at here. I guess I'll go ahead and run these social media links while I'm thinking about it. But, uh, please follow us on Facebook and YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, give us a like and a thumbs up uh, if you like this content. And here's the social media links for the other platforms you can follow us on if you would like. Uh, but like I said, we go live every Tuesday on at 12 noon Central Time on Facebook and YouTube. We're live right now on both platforms. Uh, once you subscribe, you'll get notification. So you don't have to remember Tim Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Mike Irwin, 63 and sunny in southwestern Indiana. What's going on, Mike Irwin? Okay. All right. Looks like we're rolling. We're going good. Hopefully my internet will hold up today. We don't have any weather. Don't have any wind going on outside. It's a beautiful day here in central Arkansas. Uh, as as a Helpless Garage pointed out. Big Mike says, yes, sir. Thank you for looking into it for me. Dave, as well, he contacted me and will appreciate it very much. No problem, man. No problem. Just let me know if you have any anybody out there, you know, if you want to, uh, if you have a, an issue or something, you, you don't know exactly what to do, just uh, ask me. You know, I'm, well, I'm friends with Mike on Facebook, so send me a friend request on Facebook and you can get in touch with me that way. Jeffrey says, I tried to get your Arkansas address to send you that Yamaha factory manual, no reply. Uh, they probably wouldn't give out my personal address, Jeffrey, uh, did, but if you'll just send it to the Ohio address that they probably gave you, that's the, that's the warehouse, and then they'll, they'll get it to me. Uh, they probably, you know, probably don't, that's probably not allowed, you know, I would think. Uh, Craig, got a new puppy on Saturday. Cool, Golden Doodle. She's already been on the RXV helping me work. Cool. Dogs love golf carts too, by the way. I mean, I've, I've always had some kind of dog in my golf cart. They just love golf carts. And uh, it's funny you're getting a golden doodle because uh, we were thinking of uh, once we, not to be morbid, but you know, I have my, you know, Dino's older, so I know he's not going to be around forever. And he has a real young hyper sister. So when Dino leaves, we were thinking about, you know, what kind of replacement, and we were looking into uh, standard poodles as a replacement. And one of the reasons is, Golden Doodle would be fine too. One of the reasons is, is that I'm tired of vacuuming. I mean, the hair, you know, we have several vacuums, and the hair that, uh, you know, is, but you know, a poodle or a Golden Doodle is not gonna, not gonna shed. So uh, that would be, that would be kind of cool to me, you know, all of a sudden not having the hair issue. Cat Free says, woof to you, Craig. That's my wife, by the way. Facebook is rolling still. Okay, 
this is Tuesday the 12th. If you're watching us Tuesday the 12th at 12 noon central time, you're watching us live. William says their Marky loves golf cart and Harley Davidson rides. Yeah, I've seen some of those little dogs on Harleys before. That's, that's pretty funny. Yeah, Dino, man, he's big, big as he is, he loves a golf cart. He loves riding a golf cart. And the dog before Dino, uh, I think I showed a picture of Murphy uh, on one of the episodes. She loved golf carts. She would stay in there all day. Craig says thanks to uh, Cat Free. My wife has several different identities on the internet. It's hard to keep up with them all. <laughs> All right, we'll get started with the regular questions. All right, this is from Greg. Uh, just looking for a helping hand, I guess. I have a 2005 EasyGo TXT 36 volt lifted big tires. All right, and I have an issue some days running on the beach where I am. I'll be driving along and all of a sudden it comes to a rolling stop and won't move. This has been happening for a while and I'm about to start renting my place with the cart and don't want any issues. I wait for five minutes, it'll go again. I assume it's overheating something. Well, your, your assumption is going to be correct. Maybe the main controller being the original, I assume. If I am to replace the 300 amp with a bigger 4 to 500 amp controller, Will that matter, or might the speed sensor or the throttle sensor under my feet? Any thoughts on what should I do with this issue? If you replace your controller with an, a good aftermarket controller, Greg, like a Navitas or an Alltrax, it'll solve your problem. That a problem that would, most likely will solve all your problems. Don't worry about your foot, your ITS, or any of that other stuff, your other speed sensor, or any of that. Just change your controller for now. I have a feeling that will solve all your issues because you're already you're already pushing it with the taller tires. But then you're driving on the beach in sand, which even adds even more of a drag. It even adds to more rolling resistance for the car, which adds to more strain on the stock controller. Easy go stock controllers, you know, back then especially, they don't, the 36 volt easy go stock controllers, they didn't really like to be lifted very much, uh, unless it was going to be on asphalt, you know, just riding around in a the neighborhood. Then, then they, they, they do okay. But you start putting them on taller tires and the beach, the sand and everything on top of that, they don't like it. Jeffrey's German Shepherds, I have had them for 45 years. Smart as most people. Yeah, they are. I, one of Dino's friends is a full-blooded German Shepherd, and she is a, she's pretty awesome. Bruce, what's going on from Westfield, Wisconsin? Big Mike, can you give me a quick overview of changing those front leaves, or should I just schedule you for an on-demand call? Uh, I have done it several times. You got to remove a lot of parts. You got to remove your axle, you, uh, you know, and your, in other words, you're going to have to remove your steering thing off of your axle and then remove your axle. You're going to have to remove your floor mat. It's, it's a, it's a task. Uh, it, there's no doubt about it. You, you know, you got to remove your floor mat to get to the top side of the bolts that, that are holding the, uh, holding the leaf springs in. And then you just got to keep track of everything. So I, the, the, the best way to, to, to give you an overview of the project would be just to take some pictures. Just make sure you're ready with your, your phone before you take your steering, uh, your whole steering rack's gonna have to come off, off of the axle. And then take a good picture of that so you know where all the bolts, because there's some spacers in there too that you're gonna have to keep track of. So it's, it's not difficult, it's just labor intensive. Let's just put it that way. You got, you know, obviously you're gonna have to raise the front end up and get you, you you know, with some good floor jacks and some jack stands and have all that up in the air. Take, you know, with all, because you're gonna have a lot of parts, you know, laying around when you start taking stuff off. There are, uh, it's, a, it's just as difficult, I'd say, to change the front springs as it is the rear. And the rear is difficult because the motor is on the axle and it's got so much weight going on back there. The thing about the front, you don't have any of that weight issue to worry about, so it's just a lots of parts to get to, lots of parts you gotta remove. So it's not that big a deal, Mike. You, you, can, you can handle it, just take some pictures first. You don't need to set up a, a GHOD call just for that. Rich Eastman, we have a two-year-old mini golden doodle. I may have to give her away. She's way too smart for me. Why you gotta give her away, Rich? B 
Bob Whitfong. Good afternoon. What's going on, Bob? 2012 EasyGo TXT that I recently purchased and have done some work on. I noticed that the top end on level ground is about 9 to 10. The speed controller has been replaced with a Curtis 5201. From what I understand, that controller has to be computer programmed to increase the speed of the car. Is this most likely a controller issue or a speed sensor somewhere? It is most likely a controller issue, Bob, because it would be slower than that if it was a speed sensor issue. So it is that car has obviously been, been programmed for one of the slower speeds. See, that would be dependent on what golf course it actually originated from, because I'm, I'm assuming it came from a golf course. Uh, you know, when it was new, it probably went straight to a golf course before it hit the used market, unless you bought it brand new in 2012. You know, so, and even then, it would have been, it would have been, it could have been factory set for a slower speed. So, yeah, that would probably most likely be the issue. Okay, thank you. Big Mike says that helps. It's, uh, it's bad enough to have a smart wife. Now I'm really outnumbered. Oh, I got you. Yep, that is true. Anthony Moore made it. What's going on, Anthony Moore? Where am I at here? I think I am on number two. Craig says he wanted an Irish Wolfhound, but I was overruled. She probably wouldn't fit in the car. Yeah, there's, those are some impressive animals, Irish Wolfhounds. I've seen them several times. That's a, they're pretty neat. We don't have the space for one of those now. I did at one time, and I thought about those. Uh, Bull Mastiff and uh, Irish Wolfhound. Where my golf cart shop was, I had, I had a lot more space than I do here where I'm at now. And uh, I could have handled one of them at, there, but it might be difficult where I'm at here. Number two. This is from Reed. I have an easy go cart, long distance travel on an open trailer, roof on or roof off. What are your thoughts? I have pulled, I, my, my trailer was an open trailer, I had a 24 foot open trailer that would hold three golf carts in a row and it had a gate on the front. The first golf cart could drive into the bed of my truck and then I could shut the tailgate and then I could put three more on the trailer. So I, I had it custom made, you know, to haul golf carts. So I've hauled a lot of golf carts with roof on and roof off. If everything is fine with the roof, you know, like all the, 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 if all the connections are secured, you can pull 60 miles an hour and not, and not really worry about anything. Now, I have lost a roof before at 70 miles an hour, so, you know, it's, it's up to you. But I don't know that it just wasn't secured. I didn't check it to make sure it was secured. But 60, yeah, you can, you can go 60. Fish, what's going on, Fish? We have a boxer and a boxer doodle and can't go anywhere without them jumping in the cart with us. Say hello. That is correct. That's, well, that is what I have found over the years, too. Bob says, yes, it was from a course, bought secondhand from a dealer. Yeah, you could get that controller checked out and just to see what, uh, what setting it is set on, Bob, because uh, that's most likely going to be your issue. Because like I said, if it was a speed sensor issue on the end of the motor, it would be way slower than that. It would drop down to like two or three. Um... Uh, that might be the next, Jeffrey says. Irish Wolf, all of my have been, what are these, 140 pounds plus. Our rear wedges on my precedent roof are both broken, so I've been removing it before towing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If everything is secured, you'll, you'll be fine up to about 50 to 60, somewhere in that range. But if you've got roof problems, you might ought to think about taking it down, yeah. Number three, this is from Mike, going to, going to change from lead to lithium in my 2009 48 volt car. I'm confused about the OBC. Do I have to do anything to it? Seems so many YouTube videos and some say yes and others say no, hell. Okay, 
I don't know why anybody would say no, because that if, if that lithium, it's still gonna run through your OBC. And that lithium is gonna give that OBC all kinds of weird readings that that OBC is not used to seeing because that OBC has been monitoring your lead acid pack all this time. Now, it, it also depends on how you plan on charging it, Mike. If you, do you plan on charging it through the receptacle and you know, plug in? Because if you do, that goes straight through the OBC and that's not gonna work. So, but if you, if you charge it directly to the batteries, you know, if you hook it to the first battery positive and the last battery negative straight to the batteries and not go through the receptacle, then that would be okay. So it, there's, a, there's a couple of depend questions in there. I think that might be why you're getting yes and no answers, you know, from your research. It's because it depends on what you're, how you're charging it. Number four. Uh, Jeffrey gets a few roofs that collapse from snow and wind every year. Yep. Number four. Hello, I have a question. How long does a lithium battery take to charge from 0% to 100%? Can I set up a charging station in the garden near my house like Tesla? <laughs> sure you could. You, you want a, a charging station tower or whatever to charge your car. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Yeah, you could do that. Now, as far as how long does it take to charge, you, you're never going to get a lithium to 0%. If you do, it's toast. So you, you never want a lithium to go to 0%. So they're going to charge faster than lead acid did, but it's also going to depend on the amount of depletion at the time you tried to charge it. So they, they charge relatively quickly. But uh, there's no way that I can answer your question uh, because you should never go from 0%. Okay, helpless says as for dogs, I want a puggle. Yeah, that was those are kind of cool. We could we could vacuum with just our two dogs. I have two dogs. I got Dino. Everybody's seen Dino. He's not here today. I don't know why I keep pointing over there to where he usually is. Uh, I have Dino and Tilly. Dino's kind of got long hair. Tilly is short hair, and they both produce a lot of hair that we have to vacuum. I mean, I'm, I'm not exaggerating about the vacuum. We could literally vacuum every day if we wanted to. I don't know why my door was rattling just then. Uh, number five. Let me check Facebook before I go to number five. Bob says, thank you for the info. I have watched you on YouTube for quite a while. First time I was able to connect with you on Facebook Live. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with all of us. Well, thank you, Bob. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that, Bob. Robert Seater on Facebook. I have the strangest black lab. She doesn't like golf carts or water. Oh, man. I think there may be something in her DNA that might not be black lab. That doesn't sound normal. <laughs> That's the two most awesome things in the world to a, a dog usually. Now our other dog, Tilly, she don't like them that much. Not as much as Dino, but Dino, Dino has been golf carting since he was new to this world. So that might have something with it, something to do with it also. Anyone have a good recommendation for concealed carry on a cart? Uh, good recommendation for concealed carry? Mm, I'm kind of more of a open carry kind of guy. There's two, two guns on that one right now that you, you probably can't see. Them with a, uh, you could get one of those. If you needed to conceal something, then maybe you needed, you, you know how you can get those glove box covers? You know, you got the... Uh, the, the passenger side and driver side usually have some type of uh, glove box area that's open. You can get lids for those areas.
Helpless says he, uh, he has a mag mount in his. Okay, like one of those magnet things. Yeah, I've been seeing those a lot lately. Uh, they, I believe they have some that are even strong enough to chamber the, the gun, don't they? Like the, you, the gun is there, you can put the gun on it and it's not chambered. And then when you go to grab it, if you push it forward and it chambers and you pull it out of there, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that that's got a that golf cart's got a two-gun gun rack on the back, right at the at the cargo box. Yeah, Jeffrey says those glove box lids, you know, they they have locks on them too, so you can lock it up in case you're worried about a child or having access to it or something. See, I never had to worry about that, but I, I do have to think about it. I don't have any children, and I I, I can understand how. That would uh, be constantly on your mind if you did. Mason Grove, sorry I'm late. For, forgot it was Tuesday. What's up, Mason? Thank you for showing up. Thank you for stopping by there. Let's see, where am I at? Uh, uh, Number five is what I never got to. That's what it was. I checked on Facebook at number five. That's it. This is from Steve. I'm considering a lithium battery from a club car precedent. I have read that lithium batteries will gradually discharge even with no load on the battery. Can you comment on this? Thank you. Now, Steve, that is, that is true of any battery, of not just lithium. That's true of lead acid. That's true of AGM. That's true of gel, that's true of dry cell, that's true of any battery. That's a very small amount, but it, every, any battery just sitting there has a discharge going on, you know, a slight discharge going on. That's why you can't neglect your golf cart for six months at a time. It's because it, when you come back, it'll be dead if you don't do anything, if you don't have a battery plan to take care of your batteries. Number six. Craig says Illinois is afraid of guns. He says he would open carry, but yeah, but the kid thing. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Got to come up with something there. Might be better just to uh, either lock in glove box or just keep it on you. You know, it, that'd, that'd be the best thing maybe. MJ Dunn, what's going on? Late to the party again. What's going on, MJ? Rich says Virginia is becoming more afraid as well. Number six is where I'm at. This is from Hank. I have 2007 Yamaha Drive G22. No, not if it's a drive. It's a G29. Uh, if it's a YDRE, uh, Hank. In fact, 2007, I think, is the first year of the drive. Uh, with two-year-old Trojan 48-volt system. Two-year-old Trojans 48s. Batteries tested out fine, yet very yellowish dim headlights all the time. Front turn signals are barely visible. Is this most likely due to a 17-year-old bulbs? I don't think so, Hank. I would, I would have to ask you this. You got a 48 volt system, but you didn't tell me what your battery configuration was. All right, what is your battery configuration? You got four 12s, you got uh, six eights, or what do you got? Because if you have a if you have four 12s, your lights could be hooked to one of your 12 volt batteries, then you wouldn't have anything dim. Everything would be fine. If you have six eights you need to be hooked to a voltage reducer because there's no way to find 12 volts. Now, if somebody wanted to cheap out, they could have hooked your lights to one eight volt. Might not check on that and see if that's the case because if your lights were hooked to one eight volt, that would, that would explain why you have dimness going on. You have yellowish headlights and your, 
your blinkers is because they're they're operating off of eight volts because for some reason your lights are your cart doesn't have a voltage reducer in it so you might have to add a voltage reducer to get a usable 12 to get your lights back i'm just guessing here but that's just two possibilities i could think of for dim lights or one possibility mj dunn cleaning my kitchen fun fun yeah every state should be constitutional carry helpless jeffrey it is just my development. Our kids get first day off for opening day of buck season. I guess they're talking about buck of uh, deer season. That's cool. <laughs> George Bremer on Facebook. What's going on, George Bremer? Just joined better late than never. That is exactly right, George. Okay, number seven. This is from Cliff. My EasyGo Textron Industrial Battery Charger, model numbered, total charge three. That's all I need to know. I know which one that is. Tries to charge my 36 volt EasyGo golf cart, but after a few minutes, it shuts off. When I push the red reset button on the front, it starts again. Okay, well, it's not shutting off. It's popping the circuit breaker on the front of the charger. It starts again, but shuts off again after a few minutes. All six batteries are about six volts. What do I need to do? All right, you need to do a couple of things first. I would charge up. It's, that can happen for a couple of reasons. That can happen for a weak circuit breaker on the charger, so you could replace that and see if it still happens. Because you don't want it to keep popping, because it seems to be, over my experience, if you have a circuit breaker that pops often, they just tend to get weaker and weaker and weaker. So they just, they just pop, the the amount of times they pop is just become, it increases, you know, they just pop really easily. So you could try to replace that first. But the next time you charge your cart, why don't you put a fan on that charger? Because it sounds like it's trying to charge a really dead battery pack because you told me that your six volt batteries are around six volts. That, that, that could be, that's around dead. You know, six volts would be dead in the golf cart world. 6.0 is the difference, uh, uh, the difference between a fully charged six volt battery and a dead six volt battery. 6.37 is fully charged, 6.0 is dead. So anything below that is even beyond dead. So it could be possible that your charger is trying to charge a really, really dead battery pack that's having a lot of resistance, and then it's, that circuit breaker part is heating up and then popping. So try a new circuit breaker on the charger and put a fan next to the charger the next time you try to charge the car. Try those two things to see if that makes any difference. Once you get your batteries up, charged, it will be easier on your charger to keep them charged. They, golf cart batteries like to be fully charged at all times. They're in more of a relaxed state when they're fully charged. When they're dead, they're, they resist charging. When they're when they are up full and you don't charge, you don't deplete them for a long way. They charge up easier. Saying what have hooked the two eight volts would think the bulbs would burn out prematurely. Oh yeah, Bruce, I've seen that too. I've seen that work for a while and the bulbs, your lights are like really crazy. You know, you, you can you could run halogens off of 16 volts for a little while. LEDs may take it, you know, that there may be a, a wider voltage range with some LEDs, so they may be able to take it, but halogens will burn really, really bright and they will burn out prematurely on 16 volts. So they have to have you think about it like this. Halogens have to have a voltage range. You know, it can't just be 12.0 volts. They either run off 12.0 volts or they blow the bulbs. That can't be true because golf cart charging systems on gas golf carts, as soon as that motor cranks, that battery can go up past 14. Now, it shouldn't go to 16, but it will go past 14. So all gas golf carts have lights that are run off a 12-volt system. So, but the battery is actually putting out 14 plus, you know, once the golf cart cranks up. So there is a range of voltage that halogens can use above 12, but 
16 is pushing it. You know, I've seen 16 blow them before. I've seen them work on 16 for a while and I've seen it blow. So somewhere right around 16 is the, is the popping point is what I'm saying. Craig said he'd mount sidewinders to the roof if he could. Yep. All right. <clears throat> was that number seven? Yeah, that was number seven, wasn't it? Yep. Number eight. This is from Simon. Uh, 2017 club car, when I pushed the go pedal, pedal to the floor, 100% throttle, it will slow down. If I let up a bit, it picks up speed. Is there a throttle position sensor? What do I need? 2017 club car. So that's going to be an M core on a 2017 club car. And what is happening could be this. It could be that it's, when you go all the way to the floor, the M core signal is dropping off. See, there's a there's a rod that twists as you push the accelerator pedal and it twists the M core. It's supposed to go from zero to 100%. Apparently, when you get close to 100% and you go past it, it drops, the signal drops a little bit. That's what it sounds like. That could easily be tested from a golf cart, from a club cart dealer or a golf cart dealer that has one of those programmers, the Curtis programmer to plug into your cart. Your cart has a diagnostic port that they can plug in a special computer and, uh, and look at your M core and and see if that's what's happening you know they could eliminate that real quick but I, that's what it sounds like sounds like an m core issue tommy bedford hey tim i have a club car precedent and thinking about swapping bodies because of the way the headlights are will all bodies connect the same are they interchangeable well as long as you stay with club car precedent bodies tommy yes but it, you can't swap a well I, I said you can't. You can do anything with fabrication, but a, a, a club car DS body will not mount plug and play on a precedent frame. It's a completely different car, but a, all precedent bodies are the same, so yeah. Okay. Number nine. Oh, let me hide number eight there. Number nine. This is from Elaine. I bought, I bought the uh, sweet seats. Okay, I'm familiar with those. Sweet seats are real fancy golf cart seats. Really exp expensive golf cart seats, but they're very, very they're very comfortable. They're, they're much thicker. They got fancy stitching and everything in them. You know, they're expensive seats. There is no appropriate hardware on the back of the front seat to connect it to the cart. The seat manufacturer could not help. Is there an available part that properly connects this seat to the cart? If not, do you have any ideas on what I can do? Well, Elaine, I, I know that that is a very expensive set of seats for a golf cart, and they are they're, the way that they're sold is they're sold golf cart specific, and that, that's where the hardware would come in. So in other words, I think that you should have gotten a set of hardware for your particular golf cart, whatever model it is, unless you've got some kind of universal set that is going to require manufacture, I, because those seats are expensive enough that they're, they're sold specifically for a model like uh, easy go txt or, or club car precedent and they are supposed to just bolt right on and give you everything you need at least that would be what i would expect if i was paying that kind of money for seats that is exactly what i would want so i'm not really sure i understand what the uh why there would be a problem with it mounting tommy you can also try this with the key off quickly jump the go pedal 20 to 30 times to see if you get some relief if you do then the m core needs to be replaced but i agree with tim yeah i have seen that work too helpless you just uh, hit the hit the throttle back and forth and what what the deal is a lot of people say that it helps clean the contacts in the potentiometer because you're just rubbing back and forth on inside the potentiometer so yeah obviously you can try that yep 
Oh, uh, uh, William Rizzo and Onward is a precedent. It's just, uh, it, at least the rear is in the, uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's a precedent, so it's a, got a little bit different body on the front, but I would think, I'm not 100% sure, if somebody in the room might know the answer to that, pretty sure that a precedent body will, will, will change out and the mounting points are probably gonna be exactly the same because I don't think they changed anything to do with the frame of a precedent when they came out with the Onward. It's just got a fancy front end on it. MJ Dunn. Oh, okay. He says he thinks the newer body will work on a precedent. Can't remember the model. Onward. Yeah. I, I think it will too, uh, MJ. I think it's this. I think it is a precedent underneath. Fish. You can't buy a club car tempo body from the dealer unless you are just changing color or replacing damaged body. They won't sell it to you if you are trying to upgrade from a precedent. Why is that? I, that sounds odd. Seems like they would sell it to you. Has to pump the pedal. I did was a guy on YouTube replaced the precedent with an onward. Fish says it needs a different underbody. Ron Stecker on Facebook. What's going on, Ron Stecker? Lithium question. When a manufacturer says it has a 200 amp BMS, does that mean the pack can provide 200 amps continuous? I don't think so, Ron. I'm not sure. It would, it, cause just, we were talking last time about how batteries uh, lithium, they rate their self different than, than lead acid. Like we were talking about a uh, C rating, you know, uh, lithium batteries have what is called a C rating and that the higher the C rating, the more powerful the pack is. Uh, I would want to make sure that we're not getting amp hour confused there with that 200 amp BMS, like the, uh, the, the battery pack itself is going to be a certain amp hour and not sure what they're going to mean by a 200 amp BMS. I mean, I understand what they mean by, you know, the amp hour. That's going to, that's going to have something to do with your range. Uh oh, what happened to my TV? There it is. But I wouldn't think it could do 200 amp continuous un unless they are specifically saying that the BMS will not shut it down unless you pull over 200 amps. So I would have, before I could understand what they're saying, I would need to talk to them directly and ask them that question. Does this mean that the BMS will not shut the, shut the cart down, not shut the battery down, unless I pull over 200 amps? I'd want to know if that's what they mean by that, that 200 amp BMS. It's a good question though. William says fish is correct, okay, that it needs a different underbody. The cow part, under, uh, Rich says, I think with the tempo body, you need to change the cow part under the hood. Our tempo, I can't remember. David, I thank you, David, I got it. 200 amp BMS will allow 200 amp draw. Okay, that's what I was, that's what I said, Rich, I was, I was, that'd be what I'd want to clear up. Does that mean that it will, allow a 200 amp, up to 200 amp draw before it shuts you down. That's what I want to know. I just hate where the lights are mounted on my cart in the middle of the bumper. That's not really put out enough and really don't want to put a light bar on it. I tell you what, Tommy, I put a light bar on mine and I'm never looking back. It works great. It's like a spaceship at night. And it's just a one foot. That's just a, on this old G1. I mean, it's a clash. It's definitely a clash in technologies there. This old G1 has got a one foot light bar on it and it lights up the night. Let me check Facebook over here. Oh yeah, we're still good there. 
Uh oh. Number nine. Okay, I talked to Elaine already. Number ten. This is from Woody. I have a club car, DS, electric, 48 volt, serial number AA03. The reverse buzzer no longer works. Where is it located and how much is a replacement? Okay, Woody, well on serial number AA03 on a club car, 2003, that tells me that you do not have an IQ system. You have a series wound car. 2003 in the, in the first two letters are AA. That means you have a series wound car. It's not a region car. And in 2003, it would be an IQ if it was a region. And on your car, the reverse buzzer is located. You know where your key is on the dash? That's a little rectangle space right there. And on the side of that, it's got two screws. And it would be the same place as trying to access the back side of your key. There's two screws there, and you've got to pop that little rectangle out so you can get to the back side of your key and your reverse buzzers back there too. And if you'll go to golfcartgarage.com and you'll plug in this number at the search bar, ACC-0133, ACC-0133. That'll take you straight to a new reverse buzzer. All right. I got some pictures of their, their pictures I did for a customer I wanted to show you. Some people may be interested in this. I don't remember if I've shown these pictures before or not, but if I do, forgive me. I just forgot. <laughs> uh, upgraded precedent to LED. It's super bright now. Tempo is the fleet version. All right. Oh, I got you, William. Let's see. Let's see some carts. This is a cart I did for a customer some time ago. And uh, it's the, yeah, I, I know we've talked about this before. I think we have. Have we talked about hydro dipping or... Uh, the name of this company was called Liquid Print that did this particular body, but it's, that, it's where you get that big giant vat of liquid and you can dip things in it, you can drop shotguns in it, or you can, and it comes out in a perfect pattern. You can pick all kinds of different patterns. Well, you can do that for camo too. And obviously I like camo for some reason. And uh, I made this cart for a customer who requested it. And this is just an example of a, an alternative to painting a golf cart body. There it is right there. I took them the body, you know, off the golf cart, obviously. And there's the front, and, look, it, it, and there's the rear. I mean, it literally, it literally comes out perfect. Absolutely perfect. And at this point, when, when you get this done at this point, you have a choice. You can just leave it like that, but you have to understand it, it's got very light protection on it right now. So uh, there is a, there is a, like a semi-gloss covering over that, but you can put as much of a clear as you want to and have it shiny if you wanted to and have, you know, just whichever, ever, ever how fancy you wanted it to look. But this is just like a low form of protection that they put on top of it that, that kind of seals it in. Now it will scratch. This is not a heavy duty deal. This is like fancy, perfect camo though. Absolutely no flaws at all. It's a, it's an amazing process. And a customer was very happy but th with this card. It was a, this was an easy-go PDS that I made for him. What, I replaced the controller before I lifted it, by the way. It's got an all-trax controller in there because I knew that that was going to be a problem. But, uh, yeah, that, it came out, came out really well. Uh, Wayne Smuck. Hey, Tim. Great informative show. I have a 2008 RXV. I was told that the 8 and 9... Differentials wine. Is it possible to add a friction reducer additive to the oil to reduce the wine? I haven't actually heard that, Wayne, uh, so I don't know if that would do that. Uh, if that would do that or not. 
uh, are we talking about an electric RXV? 2008 and nine. Now, considering considering that 2008 was uh, the first year, there's always going to be some type of uh, recalls and issues on the first year of anything launched, including golf cars. I mean, I went to work for Club Car in 2004. That's the first year of the precedent. I mean, I was looking at the assembly line and watching them come off of the assembly line, the first precedence, you know. So, and I was the warranty guy. So you can imagine what kind of year I had there, uh, being the warranty guy when the precedent was introduced. There was warranties on clutches for the gas one. There was, there was uh, recalls on M cores. There was uh, recalls on windshields. It was all kinds of stuff going on until they got the bugs out. But I don't think it would hurt anything to try and see if it makes any difference whatsoever to put some kind of different oil in the rear end just to see if it would reduce the wind. If that is actually where the noise is coming from, I don't see why it would hurt anything to try, Wayne, but I have not heard that. And I talked to a lot of people with 2008 and 2009 RXVs. I haven't heard it, so I'm not sure that I would have thought that that was a common issue. I'm not sure. No one has told me that yet. Uh, side more than original. Thanks. Does the light come out of the side more than original? Cool. David Irwin said you didn't do the top. No, I didn't. I didn't do the top. It was just an experiment. Oh, by the way, that cost, uh, that cost about 800 bucks that, to get that body done like that. That was about 800 bucks. Hydro dipping a golf cart body. Now that was a while ago. You know, it was a couple of years ago or a few years back. So it may be even more now. But there was, I mean, the, the camo patterns that you had to choose from were almost endless. They, they were just lined up. You could just look at all these different camo patterns. I think that one was real tree or something common or mossy, mossy oak or something like that. But there's all kinds of different camo patterns that, you could, that I could have chosen. Uh... Helpless says he loves that look. Craig, we talked about wraps, not dipping, though. Very cool. Yeah, dipping is an alternative to a wrap. And like I said, it's flawless, completely flawless. You, you know, once it's done, there is, there's no flaws. Uh, that is awesome. My friend had the tens of his Harley dipped in RT camo. Hey, Tim, what's going on, D-Max? 36-volt motor in a 48. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, D-Max. You're going to you're going to be uh, defeating the purpose. You can do it the other way around. Let's see, can you use a 36 motor and a 48? See, it's, it's gonna be really slow. 36 volt, wait a minute. Let me, hold on, I might be getting it. Can I use a 36 volt motor and a 48? Yes, you can. Okay, I, I, I read the question wrong. I thought I, I read it backwards. Uh, in my golf cart, now this, this is mine's a series wound golf cart. So we're, if we're talking about series wound, I don't think there's an issue. But you start getting into shunt wound and region, there could be an issue. Uh, in my race car, that's a 36 volt motor. It's a 36 volt golf cart motor. I've hit it with 48. I've hit it with 72. I've hit it with 144, and it's still fine to this day. It's still perfectly fine. So yeah, you can hit a 36 volt motor with higher voltage in series in series cars in region. You might ought to check on that a little bit. Fish says, don't forget to like. Thank you, Fish. I think so, Tommy. It also has turn signals and daytime running lights. Bruce, cost has definitely gone up on hydro dipping. We just did one that I'll send you before and after pics. Yeah, Bruce, send it to me. I'll, sh I'll show it. Yeah, send it to me. Send it to 00timfreeman at gmail.com. Hydro dipping at Auto Body Shop. No, it was, it was a, uh, I used to live outside of Tyler, Texas, and it was in Tyler. It wasn't a body shop. It was a dipping shop. That's all they did. They had big vats, and they dipped all kinds of things. Paul Fortune. What's going on, Paul? 2002 Club Car DS. Where is control for brake light switch? Well, there's all kinds of different ones, Paul. There's, uh, we talked about this before, I'm sure. There's different brake light, act, brake light activation systems. You know, that all light kits that have brake lights involved. 
they have, a, they have their own specific way of activating the brake lights. Some of them is as simple as you, you uh, peel the tape off the back of this flat pad and you, you stick the pad to the brake pedal. So every time you press on the brake pedal, you actually are hitting a switch that's in this flat pad that sometimes you can't even tell that it's there. And that's one type. There's another type involving two micro switches up under the brake pedal itself, up under the golf cart. Like the, when, you, when you hit the brake, it presses one micro switch, which turns the lights on. When you hit the parking brake, it presses the other micro switch so the lights go out. But if you just hit the brake, it only presses one micro switch. So there's that type. Uh, so it just depends on what type you have or what kind of, you know, what light kit it is. But I'm sure that if you look around, you can find it. It's going to be somewhere around your moving parts because of, of your brake pedal itself. Especially on a DS. You can see all that stuff on a DS. You might have to look under the cart. If you see two micro switches under there, that's the type that you have. Like a chroming dipping shop. Yeah, I think it, I think it was, Jeffrey. Is it, it was a shop like that. Yeah, because they did they they did a lot of stuff there. Okay, back over here on Facebook, Ron Stecker says I've just bought a 2006 Western TXT series with Western body. Probably should change the rear differential oil. Runs fine and has no rear end noise. Any other maintenance items that should be considered? Just make sure that you're, go ahead and do that. You know, change the differential oil if you want to. It, but it's good that it's not making any noise, you know, and everything is fine there. Because uh, when, they're, when they're right, they're very, very silent. I mean, I think I've said that before. I rebuilt the one on that car and it is very silent. Uh, just make sure that's all you need to do in the rear end. Now, go to the front end. You're going to have around your spindles and see if you've got alamites or zerk fittings or grease fittings on the front end and make sure you put a little shots of a couple of squirts of grease in all of those keep that up and that's about it that's about all you need to do that's all you, all you need to worry about there especially if you're going lithium on your battery you're not even going to have to worry about that if you're going to go lithium you're not even, you're not even going to have to worry about battery maintenance see li lithium is uh it's got more advantages than people actually realize if you if you uh you know, if you had a golf cart where you had lead acid batteries and you had that for years and you've been taking care of your lead acid batteries, you know that it's a little bit more complicated than just charge it and forget it. And, you know, it's a little more complicated than that. You have to constantly be aware of where, you know, what state your batteries are in. You got to charge them in the winter time. You know, if you're not using the cart, you've got to say, when's the last time I charged my golf cart? or you've got to have something that's automatic and then you've got to ha add water to it. So it's a little more complicated than that, than just charge it and forget it like a lot of people think. Now, with lithium, it is that simple. It's pretty much charge it and forget it. So it changes the game for sure. So you have to factor that in when you're, when you're, when you're thinking about how much they cost is what I'm saying. Okay, let me run these uh, social media links besides YouTube and Facebook one more time. That's other platforms you can follow us on if you would like. But please follow us on Facebook and YouTube if you haven't already. And like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. If you would like to buy a hat. Speaking of hats, everybody that's still in the room, boom, official announcement. Next episode. Next episode, we're giving, another, we're giving away another bag of swag. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, so everybody, everybody that's still here got to hear it firsthand the, of the official announcement. We will, give a, we will give a hat away next Tuesday. If you would like to buy one before next Tuesday is a giveaway, you're welcome to. There's some hot links in the description to take you right to the hats that, got, that we have at Golf Cart Garage. You can buy one, of course you can, if you would like to. But we will give one away occasionally, and next Tuesday is going to be it. We're going to give one away next Tuesday. So everybody be, make sure and come back. And the only, only thing you got to do to have a, a chance to win is you got to type something in the chat, either on Facebook or YouTube, either one. Not today, but next Tuesday. 
Here is the contact information for Golf Cart Garage. If you need to contact us for any reason, there's the support at golfcartgarage.com email address. There's the phone number. Uh, you can al also contact me directly if you have some pictures you want to send me. You can either you can send them to support at Golf Cart Garage. I'll still get them, uh, or you can send them to me directly, which is zero zero Tim Freeman at gmail.com, and I'll get them that way. I'll, either way will be fine. Uh, Tell us how we're doing. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear it. If you need to buy anything from Golf Cart Garage, here is the latest coupon code that is still active to this day. It is. Coupon code is 5% off any, any parts you order if you use coupon code TIM19. That's TIM19. This code expires on April the 4th, so we've still got a little ways to go. Get 5% off any parts. Tim one nine. All right. Title of this episode was "Where Is My Reverse Buzzer At on My DS?" Okay, so we talked about that. Let me see over here. Warning signs on the motor brake to know when to replace the brake. I have two identical cards. Let's see, I missed some stuff over here. One has a 300 amp, the other has 350. The 300 has stock 370. 350 is an upgraded motor like a DND, &D, but it's black. The 350 hits 23, and the 300 hits 9. Okay, I don't, I don't think that the amps are what's causing it to be faster, D-Max. It's something else. You know, there's a difference between. Uh, speed motors and torque motors you know there's all kinds of differences in between and the amount of amps let's see that the controller is putting out is not necessarily going to have to do with the speed it's going to be the motor itself yeah there's going to be differences in that motor it could be more of a speed oriented motor that's why you got companies like plum quick you know you can send your existing motor to and they'll take your existing motor and they, they do some different stuff with the field windings and causes it to produce more RPMs on the same voltage. So it makes it faster, you know, by, the, by reducing or increasing the field winding coils and every, the, the, the magnetic field inside the motor changes and it causes it to produce more RPMs on the same voltage. So you get it back and it's faster than it was before. Well, you take that to, you can take that to as high a level of, as you want to and you can, there's all kinds of differences in motors. Wayne says it is electric. Also, is there some warning signs on the motor brake to know when to replace the brake? Everybody that I talked to, Wayne, there was no warning for them. There was no warning. It either locked up, they couldn't get it done, or it just wouldn't work at all. I mean, there was no, it just, especially on some of the earlier earlier models. Did, did we, were you the, the 2008 or 2009? So. Yeah, it's likely that you could have a brake issue because that was one of the warranty things or one of the recall stuff that was going on in the beginning for sure. David Irwin, cool. MJ Swag, that's right. Next episode, MJ, y'all be sure and come back. Galactic Technologies, cool. I've been for the swag bag. Wahoo. <clears throat> I'm here, but sick. Oh, Greg, oh, what's going on, Greg? Thank you for stopping in, man, even if you're sick. I hope you feel better. But I'll come back next time. I'm giving away a hat next time, Greg. The last chance before I head to the villages for the summer, William Rizzo for the hat. Okay, cool. Hopefully your YouTube holds on long enough so the person who wins will stay on. Yes. <laughs> yes, Kirk. Hopefully that doesn't happen. What happened last time? It, my YouTube just went out. My internet went out. Nothing about t-shirts yet. No, nothing about t-shirts yet, Jeff. Daryl Kibler. Hey, Tim, just checking in. Sonny, thank you, Daryl. Thank you for stopping in. MJ. William, do you usually go to Florida in the winter? I believe you do, don't you? Yeah, that's what William does. He goes back and forth. Live in the Florida Keys and then the villages summer. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I 
welcome Jay. Tell my Aunt Angie I said hello. All right. I think that's going to be it. Let me go back over here and see. Robert Cedar says, how do you like Plum Quick Motor? Are they, they're only an hour from my house. Really, Robert, I actually know Robbie, the owner. I actually, he knows me, I know, I know the owner. Uh, they, they make a good product, but you have to understand, it's not a new motor, it's a, you know, they, they generally take your motor and do something to it, or he's got someone else's motor already on the shelf that they've already done, and he's got different levels. I've heard a lot of people uh, that say that it was a it's good product. I have never had one myself, but I've, I've talked to a lot of people that had them. I've raced people before that have had them in their golf cart, you know, when I was used to be involved in racing. Uh, and uh, it's a, I'd, I'd, give him, I'd give him an endorsement. I don't care. I don't mind at all. Because uh, I, I hear feedback from some of his customers. I talk to so many people, but yeah, I've, I've heard good things. It, it is an option, you know, to to going out and buying a brand new motor. You know, it's, it's definitely an option for you. Okay. Greg Elliott, got a bug of some sort. Thanks for your concerns and prayers. No problem, Greg, I hope you feel better, man. So if I swap the motors, the slow one will go fast, vice versa. Well, if you hit if you hit the 36 volt motor with 48 volts, it will be faster than it was if it was hitting getting hit with 36 volts. That's what I'm saying. Can we post date comments for next week? <laughs> no, that's not how it works, Craig. <laughs> Good try though. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see everybody uh, next Tuesday. I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you for showing up and providing content for this channel. I think I'd said last time we're over 14,000 subscribers on YouTube and like 13,000 on Facebook, too. So we're, we're doing really good, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you very much for stopping by. We will see everybody later. See you later, fish, helpless. I'll see you all next Tuesday. The garage is now closed.